Thank you for tuning in. This is the Blue Bonnet Channel, and uh, we're talking about. We would like to talk about uh, coronavirus challenge in education. This is the learning situation, mostly in the United States, and many schools um, online. And uh, unfortunately, the coming semester, starting uh, August September, so many ISDs they're announced or they are more focusing on starting like at least one month online distance learning and this is uh, um, the article um, Korean uh, distance education in South Korea uh, published by the new Korean newspaper the Korea Herald and I think this is a good uh, parameter that tells us what to do here in the United States um, schools so let's review together. So this is a um, Korean school and teacher and the students uh, online. Um, this is last April. Okay, let me see. Uh, so many many Korean school also they uh, through the uh, online uh, distance education, but it's a little bit different than the United States though. Uh, they trying to. Uh, the on-site school, um, at least, or even if it partially, okay. So, and then also they trying to uh, later this year they trying to go um, have um, on-site schools, uh, even if partially, okay. And they have the same issues like uh, academic. Uh, um, the uh, the gap between students and also all the age like a first grader second grader the all the age kinder preschools and then uh, the in-person education I think is uh, somewhat inevitable uh, because of this an education system like current under si current situation and very difficult right and uh, they, what they say is a great education loss for you know the first grader, uh, first grader, yeah, and then um, and that's uh, you know uh, a tangible and interact directly with the other schoolmates and teacher. That's uh, crucial. So let's what's the downturn of remote learning? Of course, there's a good good things about distant learning. Um, so through the the uh, past experience in South Korea, um, there's some uh, lessons learned. The thing I think this is good for uh, um, a good uh, example uh, here in the United States. Um, there's a yes, uh, one or two uh, the confirmed cases happen at school, so that's why they try to open a little bit partially, gradually. And once those kind of the positive case uh, confirmed, suddenly they stop closing the schools. So this is this is reality. So if similar thing is happening in the United States here in school the next semester, second half of 2020, we may have a same route here in the United States. Education Ministry, uh, they said, okay, this is very key things. And middle school in high risk area will limit the number of attendance in physical classes to below one third. I think this is one of the uh, the idea that we may uh, U.S. schools may adopt or uh, refer to it because in the second semester of this year they're trying to let uh, the kids of their parents to choose either online or offline, right? But there's no way we can do 100% online and 100% offline, obviously, because of the many different reasons. Why? Right? Okay, if the parents, uh, the both the parents are working uh, outside and uh, is physically or uh, virtually impossible to have their kids online schooling at home, right? So that's one uh, parent reason. So this like a hybrid system, like some goes to school, uh, physical classes, while the other people uh, do uh, distant learning, right? So that's one part. And uh, 
but there is a big issue is a widening achievement gap among students, right? So uh, in South Korea, it's, it's a big issue here. That's the biggest uh, biggest drawback of distant learning. So delivery, information delivery is not a problem, right? So what they're saying is keep the young students engaged in class and help them stay interesting in learning. And really out of focus issue, uh, distracted issue, and they keep watching on the screen several hours. This is too hard for young kids, okay? Especially all the years of the all the age of uh, graders. And then uh, that's a, a gap between the students, right? And maybe top students may okay, maybe okay, right? And then some, the wealthy family, they can uh, put the private tutor to catch up their their pace, while the underprivileged students, kids, students, they have no chance whatsoever. Um, and also the in-class assignments, and. Uh, so who gonna support that uh, assignments? In some cases, or many of oftenly, they cannot do by themselves. So at school, of course, in the physical classes, teachers can help, or assist a teacher. Versus uh, at home, um, distant learning, and either parents or private tutor. But private tutor is not a common practice in the United States. Pricey solution. So. So can parents can fill the gap, and which is very difficult, right? And uh, um, and at one, okay, eighteen years is a uh, old enough to be independent. But she even she said, I was sitting in the front of the computer all day. That's hard, and easily distracted, and very difficult to focus, stay focused while uh, starting the same thing for hours, hours, hours. That's uh, difficult, even for adults. In some cases, an online class is too fast-paced. So uh, that is not good for uh, under-average students, right? So that's also the key. Mm. And so then the assignment follows assignment preparation for the next class is more difficult for certain under average students but that the cycle continues and those under average P, uh, students ran out of the motivation so that's a uh, uh, lessons learned in, uh, in Korea um, and some kids they bomb the midterm final uh, not good in grades and worry about it and uh, and then some kids they fall behind they're feeling like uh, fall behind the class and compared to smarter kids so this is a gap issue so the biggest issue okay so keep up with the fast paced online as environment so we have to have the solution for this okay well, I, don't, I don't know either parents or tutor or any like recorded class material videos they can catch up with if 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 that is possible okay um, so learning gap issue the survey shows um, with the survey in South Korea this is 65 percent respondent said the online classes aren't helpful in getting students to understand course materials. Wow, there's a two-third. It's not that helpful to understand courses. And 25%, uh, one-third is, is not a problem. So obviously top students, they have no issue. So there's a gap. Act before too late. Um, so learning lo loss, learning gap, gap between two of the online classes. Uh, this is a profound problem, of course. So, in, in South Korea, the government trying to do uh, 
some action before too late. That's a suggestion here. There's no way to fix right away, obviously, but you know, uh, the lecture could be pre-recorded. Um, the uh, the teacher said the government education authority government is too focused on the hardware elements only. But you know, if this is a coronavirus. Everybody is a, you know facing with the first situation and never uh, been there before so even government is was not ready has not been ready how do we react so they've more focused on hardware element uh, laptops whatsoever um, and then what they're saying is they left too many uh, details for school to decide so teachers and then um, individual school they have to figure out like a check attendance how to evaluate achievements and so on. I think the same issue in the United States. Um, so that's one thing. Um, if we had uh, a <clears throat> focus again the learning gap issue among students online from online classes is based on <clears throat> so once the f the midterm exam the last semester they analyze it and what to do how to make it better to uh, narrow the gap among students, learning gap, right? <clears throat> so they're preparing a mentoring system, um, the model for the students in need of support. Okay. Um, okay, education, format change. Um, so but obviously online learning will continue yeah for a long time even the next semester we don't know next year but at least a half year or longer so we have to figure out okay and we have to think about what you know how to educate what what is the best system how to update our system educate system right improve narrow the gap okay so that's a key uh, and how young students they have to advance to higher grades later on but would that be okay uh, they can they be hang, hanging on the advanced grades that's a big question though right um, the achievement academic achievement level um, you know, English subject, mathematics, uh, Korean, and so on. Um, so, this is one thing. Um, yeah, so the Korean government is working hard to figure out what to do best. So, this is a good uh, uh, lesson to learn and what they're doing. And then they even open up partially physical classes. So, I think it's a good example in front of uh, U.S. schools and U.S. education as well. Alright, so this is all for today. If you want to refer to the original, and I, I'm going to leave the URL of this newspaper and then uh, everything. Thank you so much, and uh, like my video, leave your comments, uh, please subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching.